الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Surely all praises belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the creator, the sustainer and the controller of all that happens in the universe We praise him and we thank him and we invoke his peace and blessings upon his noble messenger, his family, his companions, and all those who follow them in righteousness until the end of time. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. I trust that everyone had a good Eid last week. Uh, but one of the things that, uh, that I've been thinking about in relation to Eid is very often we talk about celebrating the Eid. And I've thought about what exactly does celebrate mean here. Because many people when they hear the term celebration, they think of amusement, of merrymaking, of simply engaging in activities that are fun and enjoyment. And I wonder, is this what the Eid, whether it's Eid al-Fitr or Eid al-Adha, all about? Certainly, uh, a ce celebrating the Eid has an element of enjoying it and having fun, being happy. But our celebration as Muslims, in particular the Eid, are not entirely simply fun and, am and amusement. With that comes an element of glorifying and praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is a balance between having fun and pursuing enjoyment on that day and remembering and glorifying and exalting Allah the Creator. And the proof of this, first of all, is in the fact that the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam has taught us the first thing we do on the days of Eid is not to get up and celebrate. The first thing we do is we pray Salat al-Eid. We remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, although it's about a celebration, it's about being happy, there is also that element, that integral element of being conscious of Allah enough to praise him and to thank him for his blessings. In fact, if you read the Quran, and I will direct you to the verses in Surah Al-Baqarah that speak about fasting. And in Surah Al-Hajj that talks about the sacrifice. About fasting in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said in verse 185, Allah says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ Allah wants ease for you and He does not want difficulty for you. This statement comes after the statement in which Allah says, So whoever witnesses the month must fast it. However, Allah also said, Whoever is ill or on a journey, they have to make up for days that they missed on other days. Then Allah says, Allah wants ease for you, not hardships. That's why some people are exempted. If you're ill, you're exempted from fasting in Ramadan. <coughs> if you're traveling, although you might have the physical ability to do so, you're still exempted if you choose to utilize that exemption. But all of this is simply to make it easy for us because it is not difficulty that is the objective of the imposition of fasting. Then Allah says, وَلِتُكْمِلُ الْعِدَّةِ And so that you may complete the number of days, either in Ramadan if you're able to, and if not, if you're ill, let's say, then the same number of days you've missed, and other days, وَلِتُكْمِلُ الْعِدَّةِ وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ And that you should glorify and you should exalt and you should praise Allah for having given you guidance. For having given you guidance. So that you should praise and exalt and glorify Allah for giving you guidance. 
This is what he says in relation to fasting and the Eid there. In relation to the sacrifice, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالْبُدْنَا جَعَلْنَاهَا لَكُمْ مِنْ شَعَائِرِ اللَّهِ لَكُمْ فِيهَا خَيْرٍ In the sacrificial animals, that's what the word budun means here in the ayah, وَالْبُدْنَا جَعَلْنَاهَا لَكُمْ مِنْ شَعَائِرِ اللَّهِ And these sacrificial animals, animals that are to be sacrificed, they are from the symbols of Allah. مِنْ شَعَائِرِ اللَّهِ And this is significant. Because Allah says in a couple of verses before this in Surah Al-Hajj, وَمَنْ يُعَظِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ And whoever exalts or treats as, as sanctified the symbols of Allah, that is from the piety of the heart. So it takes piety of the heart for a person to treat, to treat as sacred those symbols that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has identified as such. Allah says, وَمَنْ يُعَذِّمْ شَعَائِرَ اللَّهِ And whoever treats as, as, as uh, sanctified the symbols of Allah, فَإِنَّهَا مِنْ تَقْوَى الْقُلُوبِ Surely that is a sign of taqwa of the heart. That is a sign of the heart recognizing and being conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is really the objective. Here in this other verse, lower, uh, a few verses later, Allah says that the sacrificial animals are from the symbols of Allah. Lakum fiha khayr. And there is good in it for you. There is good in it for you. First of all, you will sacrifice them. That is ibadah, and that is good for you. And after the sacrifice, you can now utilize the meat and benefit from the meat. So there is good in that as well. So you should mention the name of Allah as you slaughter them. And in fact, any animal we, sa we slaughter for food, we must say the name of Allah in order to make the animal halal, the meat halal for consumption. And I say animal we slaughter for food because we're not allowed to slaughter animals just for the heck of it. Uh, just for the fun of it. So we're not allowed to go uh, uh, game hunting. Right? People shoot animals just for a trophy or just to take out a photograph. Recently, there was a bit of a controversy over a moose. An albino moose that was shot. You guys uh, know about this? Yes, there are some guys who um, shot an albino moose in one of our provinces here in Canada. I'm not sure if it's BC or, or Edmonton, one of these places. But the First Nations community, they're, uh, they're, they're upset. Because they say that their albino moose you know, represents uh, the spiritual world. The point is these guys were hunting just for the sake of trophies. This is not allowed in Islam. Even for animals that we are not allowed to eat their meat. Like uh, 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 these animals of prey or animals with canine teeth. So hunting lions or tigers just for a photograph or for a trophy, you know, to make a, a rug or a mat in your home, this is not allowed. What we're allowed is to kill an animal if it poses a danger to us. Not for the sake of a photograph or a trophy, or if we need it in order to eat. So either it poses a danger or uh, we need food. So Allah says, mention his name when you slaughter them, and after they have died, فَقُلُوا مِنْهَا وَأَطْعِمُوا الْقَانِعَ وَالْمُعْتَرِ You should eat from it, but you should also feed the poor and the destitute. Then Allah says, كَذَلِكَ سَخَّرْنَاهَا لَكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Thus we have made these animals subservient to you. They serve you. They do things for you. At the very least, they feed you. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ That perhaps you will be grateful. You will be thankful to Allah. Then Allah tells us in the next verse, and this is an important verse, because it teaches us one of the most important concepts in our lives, not just about the sacrifice. Allah says, لَنْ يَنَالَ اللَّهَ لَحُمُّهَا وَلَا دِمَاؤُهَا Neither the flesh nor the blood of the animal will ever reach Allah. That's not what reaches Allah. 
So the physical sacrifice, it, that is not what reaches Allah. There is something else that should reach Him. Allah says, وَلَكِنْ يَنَالُهُ التَّقْوَى مِنْهُ However, it is the piety from you, this, this taqwa from you, this awareness from you, this willingness to sacrifice. This is what reaches Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So even as we celebrate Eid al-Adha, brothers and sisters, it's not just about going to the farm and slaughtering an animal and then coming home, mashaAllah, and enjoying the meat. It is more than that. That's part of it, of course. But more than that, it is the awareness, the consciousness, the understanding that the person has of what he or she is doing and what it means, what, it, what is its significance. Allah says that is what reaches him. Then Allah ends the verse, and this is really the point I was, I was getting to. كَذَلِكَ سَخَّرَهَا لَكُمْ لِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَتَاكُمْ Allah says, thus he has made these animals subservient to you, that you may exalt and you may glorify and you may praise Allah for having guided you. And he said almost the same thing about fasting. وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ In Surah Al-Baqarah. So that you may fulfill the number of days prescribed for fasting, and that you may exalt or glorify Allah for having guided you. And here Allah says, thus he has made these animals subservient to you. كَذَلِكَ سَخَرَهَا لَكُمْ He has made these animals for your benefit. لِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ So that you may glorify and praise. تُكَبِّرُوا means to do takbir of Allah. That is to exalt Him, to glorify Him, to praise Him for the guidance that He has guided you to. وَبَشِّرِ الْمُحْسِنِينَ And give glad tidings to those who do good. So at the end of the day, brothers and sisters, our celebration as Muslims, the perspective that Allah has taught us, is that whenever we celebrate, whether it's the Eid or you may celebrate other occasions, you know, weddings, people celebrate weddings, mashaAllah. And I know there are some controversies about birthdays and anniversaries and so on. But nevertheless, <clears throat> what we're taught here in the celebration of the Tu'eed is that with our celebrations come an element of glorifying and praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In other words, being able to recognize the blessings of Allah and thanking Him for them. Even as we will celebrate and we will have a good time and we will have fun and so on, we also should recognize or should be able to recognize the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and glorify Him and exalt Him for that. Thank Him for that. Show gratitude. And our gratitude is not only to say Alhamdulillah, but it is also to, to glorify and to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why, as you all know very well, for three or four days after the day of Eid, what do we do after every prayer? After the third prayer, we recite the takbir, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd. This is the tradition that the Prophet والسلام, left for us. That not just on the day of Eid, before we go to the Eid prayer, and while we're waiting for the Eid prayer, we glorify Allah. No, for the next three days after that as well. We glorify and praise and exalt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, at the very least after every prayer. It's not limited to that, of course. As, as an indiv individual, I should do it more than that. But at the very least, every time we pray uh, from the day of Eid until the next few days after that, Together as a congregation, we, we praise and we glorify and we exalt Allah the Creator. So our, uh, an integral way of how we express gratitude to Allah is by praising Him and by exalting Him and by glorifying Him. So I hope that inshallah we had a good Eid. But remember the Eid is over. The question is what happens next? And what happens next is that we should realize that the objective of the Eid was simply, the Eid itself was simply an expression of our willingness to submit to Allah's commands. Now we have the rest of the days and weeks after the Eid to actually prove that. 
to show that, look, indeed, I believe in Allah and I submit to his commands. So that is what should happen next. Until, you know, Ramadan comes and so on. Now we have the opportunity, brothers and sisters, to prove that indeed our claim is, is truthful. That we indeed uh, submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that proof is in how we deal with uh, our decisions and the choices we will make uh, in the future. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May He open up our hearts and minds so that we can understand this wonderful message is revealed from mankind. And may He inspire and motivate us to live by this message. May Allah cause us to be among those who strive to make their lives one of submission and surrender to His commands and His will. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make cause us to be among those who are pleased with what he has uh, prescribed and ordained and may allah accept from us uh, may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us our good deeds may he forgive for us our mistakes and shortcomings and we pray that all the brothers and sisters who went for hajj will not only the had to be accepted but that Allah would return them home safe and sound to their families so if you have any family members who went for Hajj or any friends or any members from the community you know may Allah return them safely to their homes uh, very soon they should start uh, coming back home insha'Allah aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh